We need to unite and work together if we're all going to get through this. Sounds like socialism to me. The amount of people I see talking about socialism positively is actually staggering. Do you think, I mean, do you really think that, we, that a proletarian revolution is just around the corner in America? And your hero, Obama. He's not my hero. I'm not a communist, If Bernie Sanders were president, right, and he wanted to bring the same ideas as social, for socialism into this country, don't, do you think that we would benefit? Yeah. But I just told you Venezuela is eating rats. But I just want people to have health care, honey. I don't want, like... All right. Welcome to episode eight of the Sensible Socialist podcast. Uh, in this episode, it's going to be pretty quick and uh, dirty. It's just me this week. And I'm going to talk about something that uh, has been touched on in a few different uh, episodes. But uh, I don't know, just kind of want to lay it out a little bit in terms of the way that I think about it and uh, what we should really do about it. But uh, I thought one thing that would be kind of interesting to do would be to just kind of tell you what I think is some uh, interesting articles and things like that that might be worth uh, looking at. So... Um, Honestly, the Jacobin uh, magazine, uh, jacobinmag.com, has an interesting interview with uh, Cynthia Nixon and another good interview uh, with um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And uh, I think that uh, is, you know, a good article. That's obviously something that people are talking about a lot. On the uh, Socialist Worker newspaper, uh, that's the International Socialist Organization. They have an interesting article by Nancy Welsh called "The Importance of Being Uncivil," and uh, it, uh, it talks about you know some of the more uh, aggressive actions. I guess some of you would say about uh, restaurant confrontations and things like that. I think that uh, um, it's it's an interesting take. I, I'm not sure exactly, honestly, how I feel about that all the time. I get some of the points that she's uh, she's making I do understand uh, the certain role of civility but I also understand a role for uh, uncivility or incivility so uh, it's worth worth checking out it'll be uh, put in the description below on the socialist alternative website there's a really good article about uh, the $15 an hour uh, it's been one year since it's passed and uh, there's le lessons for the sister city of Minneapolis, uh, St. Paul, and uh, gives good uh, background into what's going on in a particular place in the country that's got a lot of uh, action happening. So it's well worth checking out. On uh, the uh, People's World, the Communist Party's newspaper, um, there's an interesting article about uh, a new executive order from the Trump administration that uh, essentially allows... Um, federal uh, workers to be subject to quite a bit more, I would say, abuse by their bosses. And uh, one of the ways that Obama had done had done what he, you know, th I think what he thought he could uh, in terms of labor rights was through executive actions for federal workers, hoping that that would then translate. Uh, oh, Trump seems to have taken that message and is uh, doing the same thing. So uh, the last article that I think uh, is worth looking at. It's a few, well, it's 10 days old, but it's uh, an article from Socialist Alternatives uh, paper about, or from the website rather, uh, about how DSA has really grown. And uh, DSA, I even saw Bashkar Shankar on, uh, I think it was Facebook or Twitter saying, you know, that uh, DSA is uh, almost at 50,000 people. And so uh, that's I mean, that's quite a lot of people, and with the victory of uh, Alexandria uh, Ocasio-Cortez uh, and many more people sort of calling themselves so democratic socialists or uh, seeming to get, you know, affinity with the ideas that they think that word defines, uh, there's a call for, uh, you know, I guess one of the sections is towards a new socialist party, and... You know, it just says, uh, Socialist Alternative urges DSA to take advantage of its rapid growth and dynamism to use this potential to launch a new, broad, democratic socialist party. In our view, there is an opening to bring together the best forces on the left, and more importantly, a new generation that is actively looking to fight for socialism. With a bold lead from DSA, a new party of 50,000 to 100,000 members could be rapidly built. 
Of course, without further steps toward political clarification of key strategic issues, such as a formation, would uh, have an unstable character. Nevertheless, this would rep uh, rep this would represent a qualitative step forward for a social movement. Um, and so I'll, I'll link that as well. But I think um, that that's actually absolutely 100% uh, correct. That um, DSA has obviously uh, become a force that people know. Uh, there's uh, talk about you know what DSA is doing even in you know the area that I'm in the uh, DC area um, DSA is involved in a lot of different things and uh, in some ways plays a, a leading role and uh, is definitely you know a, a place where rapid growth is obviously uh, having an impact on the organization positively and negatively you know it's not all it's not all roses but it's uh, it's it's actually a pretty good thing and so, but it seems to me, and this is something that I talked about both with uh, Algier in episode seven and uh, Josh in episode four about uh, the need for a coming together of different social groups. Uh, right now, you know, I think if you look at the landscape of the different social groups, you've got the Socialist Workers Party, the Socialist Alternative, uh, Socialist Action, the Communist Party of the USA, the Socialist Party of the USA, Socialist Labor Party, uh, the Communi Revolutionary Communist Party, the uh, Socialist Alternative, um, who am I missing? The Party for Socialism and Liberation. Um, you have uh, a good dozen to maybe like 15 different organizations. You do have PACA, um, Pan African Communist, I think is what Pakistan's where I. It sounds terrible, but um, I. Uh, so there are a lot of there are a number of different organizations, and there's a reason why there's there's an organization. One some of the reasons we did discuss with Josh about the tendency for groups to split on certain issues, and I can understand completely why there has been this tendency to split. Uh, on issues that we think are make or break or are incredibly important. You know, it, it seems strange, but even now there's still talk about, you know, Lenin or, or sorry, Stalin or Trotsky. You know, there's, there's a lot of things that are able to put a wedge between different parts of the left. And it was also a great tactic that the COINTEL program used to be able to uh, basically handicap the uh, the socialist movement and uh, you know can split it up because if you split the the organizations up they're much much easier to uh, keep control of and so uh, it's a tactic that works that makes sense and uh, isn't surprising that. Uh, it's been perpetuated. So I've, uh, in my own experience, I've been a member of a lot of these different organizations from Socialist Workers Party, Social Alternative, the you know Youth for Socialist Action, uh, the Communist Party. Uh, I've worked with all of these different groups, and there is, you know, so much that they share in common, and a certain few things that they disagree on. And again, I'm not saying that those disagreements aren't important or have something genuine, you know, to add to a conversation uh, amongst ourselves. But in terms of it being a handicap for us to not be able to get together and work together on core issues that we can build a base of power with, uh, the, the divisions no longer make sense. So the inspiration that I have for the, the sort of way I'm thinking is, uh, is Lenin, um, partially in like what is to be done, but just in the way that you, you're talking about organizing different people, different organizations and people with different approaches. Now, I think Lenin, uh, for some understandable reasons, and I think some quite zealous reasons, uh, was also someone who could drive wedges between people 
but he also had visions for what would be able to be done that uh, are effective. Something like a single spokesperson. So in, in what is to be done, he talks about you know the all Russian political newspaper. But the the and we need to take the inspiration and in not say a newspaper, but a uh, sort of media platform that we can communicate to all of the different people that we want to communicate to in a way that is accessible and digestible and uh, but also gives our message out and the only way that we're going to be able to have some kind of consolidated media system that's going to be able to communicate to people in the way that they get information nowadays is to have our own kind of consolidation and so something like the the art the essay article says that uh, you know DSA is obviously leading this but there is a strong tradition of a lot of different other uh, parties and I think the w there, you don't want to lose those but what you do want to do is be able to allow a space where all of the people can come together discuss honestly and openly make connections with each other see each other face to face and work on the same issues that we all agree need the kind of solution that we can offer and so to that end what we absolutely need in the United States of America is a Congress where we can all get together and uh, set out a platform and so now the I had high hopes for the People's Congress of Resistance uh, it, it, it was a great idea of you know founding a a sort of you know new Congress and I think that you know if it's an idea that somehow it was going to create a dual power kind of situation obviously I think that would be um, more it would just be idealistic and I don't think that was genuinely the intent it was a good way to get people together but it really didn't result in a new party or anything like that emerging. I mean, I think it was a a grand uh, example of how you can get a lot of people together and talk about important issues, come up with a manifesto that is very easy for people to understand. And I think the People's Congress of Resistance manifesto is pretty decent. I think it's well worth looking at. And I want to make sure that there's a link for it uh, below. But the it wasn't the founding of a party, and it didn't have the kind of even boring... Uh, legislative aspects of coming up with a platform and and really making something that could could compete and DSA has had a number of wins in the political arena and Socialist Alternative has had a win and a lot of influence in the political arena and so there are already things that we can do to genuinely make ourselves a legislatively successful party and when you're looking at the different socialist parties or different parties of the left nowadays when they are ever able to really do anything it's only when they come together and even if it's the radical left organization and there's a lot of things that aren't fun about something like Syriza which really does just mean coalition of the radical left which is exactly what I'm proposing we create uh, in the United States but it, if you look at Podemos and other organizations, now, yes, they've had failures, they've had successes, but they've shown that the only way that you're even going to be able to try to succeed in the political arena is to come together and fight in every way that you can, from absolutely legal means of running candidates and doing uh, that kind of on-the-ground work to more active campaigns of... Uh, confrontational resistance and so I think that you can only have the power that those other examples represent if you're able to come together and the United States has a lot of people a lot of very well uh, committed and organized and dedicated and intelligent people on the left who could really organize the rest of the left to be able to fight for even the modest gains that the kind of social democrats that you know Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez I think is and even Bernie is 
that you can win those gains while organizing a new party that isn't the Democratic Party, that is a people's party, a worker party, a party of the 99% in the, in the language of Occupy. And so that's what's necessary in, in order for there to be any success, as far as I can honestly see. And so what has to be, and, and what I am going to try to honestly do, is create an organization that sole goal is to make this Congress happen. Uh, Lenin, one of the first organizations that Lenin, I think, founded or was part of, I can't remember, um, was called the League for the Emancipation of the Working Class. And I want to sort of announce or say that the this sort of organization for the League of the Emancipation of the Working Class is going to be one that is going to call on all of the different organizations in the United States, all the radical left organizations from Black Lives Matter uh, to, you know, the Communist Party, the Revolutionary Communist Party, the radical left. If you're on the radical left, we will have a convention where we will found a party, establish a platform, and make a competitive institution with the two big business parties. And I think that you'd see, you know, as long as the platform actually makes sense and it doesn't get bogged down in a lot of different difficulties about uh, the sort of makeup of it or if it doesn't get caught in uh, outcome equity kinds of questions, this new party can really be a force to be reckoned with. And something that, you know, a third of Congress comes up to for vote pretty often. And so there is a genuine way that you can have a wave that is able to really hone the discontent that may and did definitely fuel a lot of votes for Trump, but also the excitement and interest uh, for Bernie and, and other candidates who are definitely the most sort of progressive that we've seen in quite a while. And so... This organization is going to be reaching out to all of the different organizations, the highest people that we could possibly uh, talk to, and genuinely start a conversation about who is interested and who isn't interested, and if you aren't interested, why you aren't interested. Because this seems to me to be something that a lot of people want, but are not actually, don't actually think is possible. We need to communicate to all of our comrades and friends that coming together is possible. And when we come together, amazing things are also possible. And so the, it's high time that we recognize differences, recognize that there are issues to be worked out, but put them aside for the moment to found something new that we can all rally behind, feel a part of, and commit ourselves to. The Democratic Socialists of America are a good start and a good example of what it could be, but it needs the knowledge and education and organizational ability and institutional knowledge that organizations like the CP, like Socialist Alternative, like the Socialist Workers Party have and are able to give to a new generation of people who don't aren't getting that institutional knowledge um, anywhere else. And that DSA's institutional knowledge is different, and it's okay, but it needs to be augmented by the institutional knowledge of, the, of all of the left. And so the founding of a Syriza for the United States, a, a coalition of the radical left, is absolutely necessary. It should happen uh, as early as possible before the next crisis happens, because when the next crisis happens, if we are not prepared with an organization that is able to unite us all in a you uh, you know united front then we are not going to be able to fight the the consequences of trump and the rise of white nationalism to straight fascism and so if we don't get together and we don't really organize together this situation is not good and so this is not a uh, pie in the sky, this is not idealism, this isn't something that 
we'd really like to happen, but you know, we don't really think it's going to. No, it has to happen, and it needs to be uh, sooner rather than later. Because unless we get this organization together, we don't have a hope to be able to fight the 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 right, who is very well organized, very well funded, and isn't a, is able to do a lot more with a lot less people. We need to find an organization to get as many people as possible geared up and ready to fight for the goals that we all want to achieve. The temporary goals of things like Medicare for all, higher wages, redistribution uh, of wealth through you know tax incentives and things like that that was tried in places like Seattle. But then for the larger goal of really organizing democratic workplaces and being able to find methods to be able to transfer the means of production from these individuals who aren't working at them to the workers who actually produce the products. So check out uh, in the future. I'm still making the plans on this and contacting people that I think would also be interested. If you are hearing this and you would be interested, please contact the Sensible Socialist uh, podcast at it's sensible socialist podcast at gmail.com uh, check out sensible socialist.com you're obviously here so check that out and uh, please uh, let me know if you're interested that we the only way that we're going to be able to build this is build it together and that's what we need to do so let's use this as the opportunity to connect to each other find out what we can do and let's make the league for the emancipation of the working class be able to organize the all-American Congress of the Radical Left for the founding of a coalition of the Radical Left Party in the United States. All right, so that's it for me. Again, short episode, just 20 minutes, no big deal. Check out those news articles. They'll be embedded in the uh, descriptions below. Uh, and check out, in the very near future, the League for the Emancipation of the Working Class going to organize the Coalition for the Radical Left. Uh, I did just want to say that the Sensible Socialist does have a Patreon page. If you go to Patreon and search for Sensible Socialist, you will find us on Twitter. It's Sensible Social One. That's where you'll find the Sensible Socialist Twitter page. There's a Facebook page, Facebook uh, Sensible Socialist. And the other thing that I want to mention, though, is that if you want to do the Patreon, that's cool. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. I'm going to make episodes no matter what. But uh, I have a... a an organization that you really should contribute to, which is the uh, IWOC, the Incarcerated Workers Organizing Committee, who needs to do jail support. So uh, if you check out incarceratedworkers.org slash donate, or you can check them out on Facebook, uh, and they do have a Patreon too. So check those out. Incarcerated Workers Organizing Committee, League for the Emancipation of the Working Class, Coalition for the Radical Left. We're going to do it. It's the only way we're going to win, so let's do it. Uh, Got to get some good guests, hopefully, in the next little bit, so uh, that's why this episode is short. Uh, working on getting some people, a Marxist-Leninist and uh, an anarchist and a few other different people. So uh, check it out. A lot of good things coming up. Stay tuned, and uh, see you next time. In the early morning. She called me.